So we still get a lot of questions about what each individual filter does and when it is appropriate to use it. That's why we've decided to create this short series of tutorials where I go through each and every filter, tell you what they do and show you how to use them and talk about the situations in which you really need them. And today I will be talking about ND filters. So ND filters or neutral density filter works by cutting some of the light coming into your lens. But why do you need such filter? The main purpose of the ND filter is to get a better control over your exposure. I usually use ND filters to get motion blur so that I can deliver more cinematic feeling to the viewer with my videos. Apart from that, these filters are also very useful for panoramas and long exposure photos. But you might be wondering how to choose the right density filter. You might have seen ND8, ND64 or even ND1000 filters. So how do you know which one is right for you? Look at it this way. Higher ND number on the filter means higher density of the filter. The filter will also appear darker the higher the density and the ND number. For example, if you're filming videos and you want to introduce motion blur to your image, then make sure your filter is dark enough so you can use 180 degree rule without overexposing your image. As I'm filming right now during a bright day, relatively bright, with a relatively wide aperture of f2.8, ISO 800 and shutter speed 1 60th of a second, having a D filter like ND8 and D16 wouldn't make my image dark enough. That's why I chose a D64 for this particular scenario. Now let's talk about long exposure and Z filters. Let's take a D1000 filter for example. It is extremely dark and it's just what we need for long exposure photography or time lapses with motion blur. That filter allows me to use longer shutter speed on my camera even during super sunny conditions. Now what makes the ND filters different to variable ND filters? Straight ND filters have better color accuracy performance as they do not introduce color shift. They also work best for photography and panoramas unlike VND filters. Forget about VND filters for panoramas, they will not work. VND or polarized filters, they will introduce this weird vignette into your image. So if your goal is having the best image quality possible, then I recommend using ND filters. Alright, so now you know how to choose the right filter for your camera and what you should be taking into account to achieve a better looking image. Make sure to watch our other tutorials and stay tuned for more. See you next time. Bye-bye.